Hello. You've probably wondered why there are some projects I haven't really gotten to when it seems like I should be all over them, like the Data General stuff, or even this TRS-80 Model 4, which I would very much love to have going because it would make a great counterpart to my TRS-80 DT1 that I love so dearly. But the problem is, I haven't had the correct tools to work on these things. I mean, really, the only things I've had have been my 34401A multimeter and just the analog scopes I've got for cheap off Craigslist. Well, today I'm finally ready to introduce something that I properly invested in. An HP 16500C Logic Analyzer mainframe. Now, this thing is on an entirely different level than all of the other hardware I own. Except for maybe the Bitscope BS10, but I'm not a fan of the USB logic analyzer things, it turns out. And this does literally everything that does, but it just sits there and is ready for when I am. But it has one problem that's kind of unique to me, and well... It's super loud, and the hard drive's going to inevitably fail, so today I figured... We'll go ahead and take a look at converting it to flash storage and trying to quiet it down. Alright, now before we start tearing into this, let me give you an idea of what this thing is. So this is a logic analyzer or logic analysis system. It's a mainframe, and by mainframe, that means that it uses big add-in modules to achieve all of its functions. So you plug those cards in and then you get cables that come out of the back and then you plug in, I have one here, pods and these are how you get the timing signals into it and then you use it through there. Now you'll notice that just about the only control it has is this jog wheel which isn't going to do much right now and that's because this thing is touchscreen. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. So this is the older style of touchscreen. This is not capacitive. This is not resistive. This is ultrasonic. You can see the transmitters along the edges of the display. So it's using that to detect where your finger is. And part of why that's interesting is because you can use anything and that will work. It doesn't matter what you poke it with uh, as long as you have something to interrupt the sound waves it will work now this thing is super loud so i really do want to fix that but um just to give you a really quick little look here uh we have an oscilloscope built in um as one of the cards in the back we have the state and timing which we can uh see here so you have I'll do this timing auto scale execute and if there were signals going into it they would be showing up there so this is all a, a it's a really cool thing um it has a floppy drive yeah um and if i want to i could go to do, 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 do system flexible disk and i could see what's on that floppy disk there is a backup of the settings and the system on there, but uh, it also has, it's got so much stuff. It's got uh, FTP, NFS, all of that allows you to access the internal hard disk, which allows you to do a lot of different things. This uh, lets you take screen captures of the display. You can access uh, saved data. There's still a lot I haven't gotten into with this, but part of that's because I've been wanting to Go ahead and convert it over to more modern uh, technology inside. So uh, yeah, we should probably move on to working on that. All right, I took this down and I put it on a Lazy Susan here so we can more easily move it around because this sucker is super heavy. There are three models of this uh, logic analysis system available. I'm probably gonna screw up and call this an oscilloscope. I know what this is. You don't need to correct me. It's just, it's really annoying to call this a logic analysis system when it's a logic analyzer and an oscilloscope. There are other cards, but we'll, we'll get into that. I'll probably just end up calling it a scope by accident. So yes, I know. Anyway, this is the C model. So this was the last version of this. And if you're out there looking for a um, logic analyzer oscilloscope thing, um, and you're looking at these, 
you probably want to try and hold out for a C. Um, so there are some pretty big differences. For one, the C is the only one that has PS2 mouse and keyboard inputs. The A and the B models that came before it use HP HIF, um, I believe that's the uh, input type, uh, type interface uh, peripherals for this. So I'm personally going to connect this Cherry uh, G84 keyboard, I think it is, um, because this is just PS2, and then I can control literally every aspect of this thing with just the keyboard, so that's gonna be really handy. So that's one difference between the uh, A, B, and the Cs. Now, the A, you probably really want to avoid because it has a really, really early three and a half inch floppy drive. Um, it's double density only. Um, it's actually half height, which is kind of funny, um, but it has to also boot off of the floppy drive. Now, interestingly, the A has a floppy drive here and it has one right here, and you would put the operating system disk in here, and then you could put your data disks in here for saving screenshots or whatever. So that's something to keep in mind. And then the B still uses LIF formatted disks. So one thing about the C here is that this is a regular three and a half inch, 1.44 megabyte disk, and this can support FAT12 formatted disks to just stick in a regular PC, USB floppy drive even. Um, so that's super easy to work with. And then the hard drives, which I believe are right here maybe, um, I'm not 100% sure, are IDE, so that compact flash adapter should work fine. The B and the C both have hard drives. I believe they are a 500 megabyte um, quantum drive, which uh, eh, those were good when they were new. I think they're all starting to die though, so. It's uh, time to pull that out of there. Uh, some of the options here we have on the back. So first off, this one has the extended uh, control interface board here. This probably has some particular part number. Uh, that might be it um, there. But it, what it really means is it has LAN. So with LAN, um, you can use NFS, FTP, uh, X window, and other stuff, I think even. Um, to control and read data from the oscilloscope. Um, yeah, there we go. <laughs> and it makes it kind of a lot easier to work with. So when I'm doing videos here, I'm going to be able to use my computer and save screenshots over the LAN connection um, and then superimpose those in videos in the future. So that's gonna be super handy. But if you don't get one with LAN, um, you do have um, parallel printer outputs, that's yay. Um, but you have RS-232 for control and Really interestingly, HPIB. Um, so I'm excited about that because um, <laughs> obviously I'm a fan of that. Eventually I'll hook this up to my uh, HP86 from the Series 80 line and see what I can control with it. This does just use SCPI as the uh, programming interface. So that will be super easy to work with and I'm looking forward to that. Now, both fans that this has, I think these are the only two, are right here. So clearly this thing's designed to, and based on the way the labels are, designed to exhaust this way. So it would pull in from this side over here and we can see inside that it's fully open. The circuit boards are kind of stacked up there. So draw in air over here and exhaust it over here. And these are super beefy fans. Look at the size of that hub motor. That is ridiculous. So <laughs> uh, yeah, these are loud. So really conveniently, these are 120 millimeter fans. So this should be totally doable. Um, unfortunately, I only have one Noctua fan. So I'm gonna be putting a standard PC case fan um, in one of these, probably here, since I can get to this one from the outside, and then I'll leave the Noctua buried deep in there in case I find another one of these. Like almost everything I own, this came from Goodwill because these are expensive and I'm cheap. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna be doing that. And I've, uh, like I was saying, I already looked at the data sheet on these. So um, the markings for the voltage on these are rather ambiguous on the stickers, but they accept a range of voltage inputs from nine to 15 volts. And it looks like the standard operating voltage is 12 volts, but that's not really going to matter for me because I'm gonna be using this, which if you watched my server build video a long time ago, uh, you may remember I pulled out of my server chassis. This is a fan controller. Now it has so all sorts of inputs and outputs um, for fan power. And I can connect this to power off of the hard drive, which will give me 12 volts. And then I can connect the fans I'm going to put into it in there. That is pretty much it. Um, 
I will say um, other things that I wouldn't mind doing to this. I think this is a good candidate for GoTech. Now, I like using the original stuff as much as the next guy, but uh, this is something you know, I could actually see me using a bit and having a flash drive connection right there. It wouldn't be that bad. Um, the only real reason I have against that is because it's got LAN on it. So, you know, I could always just pull the data off of that. Um, and once I have the compact flash card set up in there, it may not be that difficult. So we'll see how that goes. Um, for now, I think that's pretty much it. So let's uh, figure out how to tear into this. Wow, that was way more of a pain than I anticipated. Most of it was down to the fact that the hard drive mounts on this and the underneath bolt holes, which is just stupid. Leave it to some weird industrial application to actually use those. But the IDE cables retained by that lip, so it's just a pain to remove the hard drive, which I didn't actually want to do. I just I want to leave it installed in there now that I see how much space there is. Uh, I'm going to put the compact flash card adapter thing on the other side of where the drive mounts and then just leave the drive in there as a backup and I'll insulate it like that. Um, so yeah, um, I would wanted to take this out though. I could have reached these there, um, but I want to install the fan. Where's one? There we go. I wanted to go ahead and install the fan while I have access to everything and uh, see how those holes line up. Oh, that's so perfect. That will absolutely work. So that's sweet. Um, and another thought occurred to me. So it really seems like, yeah, the, the, uh, the fan controller is just about the right size there. So it could fit like that. And I'm wondering if I bend these out. Oh, I could totally, if I can find a bolt, just put that right there. Yeah. And then just add some spacers. That'd be perfect. So, all right, sweet. And then this is right next to where the fans are, so that'll be really easy to do. Cool. A plan has been formed. Well, it actually turned out to be even easier to install this than I thought it was going to be. The thread for these hand screws is the same as a floppy drive or the D-sub connector header type things, so I was just able to bolt it in normally, so that's kind of cool. So like I mentioned earlier, the original drive is just a standard IDE hard drive. There's really nothing special going on with this. It's just that these quantum drives aren't holding up well over time. So it's not a bad idea to make a backup of what's on there and then migrate it over to something like this, um, which you should be able to use nearly indefinitely. Um, the flash will obviously have limited write cycles, but it's a logic analyzer or an oscilloscope. You're not going to be writing to this all that often. So just using it in a read only setting, it should do pretty well. Uh, so I'm going to hopefully use this setup. I know four gigs is overkill for a 500 megabyte hard drive replacement, but uh, I'll never have to worry about space after that. And I don't really want to open this up again. So that should be perfect. Now, when you go to reinstall the operating system on, well, either one of these or one of these, uh, you will need the disks. Um, so apparently there are four disks for this. It looks like online there's six, but there's a test and a uh, demo disk. So you don't really need those just to reinstall. So the four disks alone should be enough. And then one final thing, because of the type of adapter I'm using, I will need a floppy power adapter because it would make way too much sense to have a device meant to replace a hard drive have a Molex power connector. But no, I have to have floppy power connectors, so whatever. Uh, I guess I need to actually put this back together uh, before we can install everything, so we should probably do the fan mods next. Okay, so for the fans, um, I've gone ahead and removed these already. So as I mentioned, I have one Noctua and one just regular old PC fan. Um, I wish I had two Noctuas, but I don't have two and I can't afford two. So that's what it's going to be. Um, the Cooler Master fan will go right there, because if I do eventually get a second Noctua, this is the easiest one to remove because it goes there. And then the Noctua will go here. So uh, yeah, I'll get started installing those in a moment. But first, um, these original fans, these are metal frames. Just these are ridiculous man um oh bearing's not particularly great in that one let's 
see if you can hear that when I spin it. Yeah, that's had some miles put on it. How about this one? That one's way better. Yeah. So that's probably a good portion of the noise as well. <laughs> um, so, yeah, those are ridiculous. I mean, just the hub size alone tells you all you need to know. Anyway, I am just going to go ahead and get started installing these now. Uh, well, this is concerning. My HPIB port appears not to be connected. Um, that's cool. Parallel port is connected. It looks like right here, the RS-232 port is... Oh, uh, looks like it's also carried along. That's one big flat connector, and it would make sense if that is the HPIB port. So let me take out the oscilloscope cards here and see if I can see what's going on there, because I'm going to be honest, HPIB's like 50% of the reason I wanted one of these, because I want to hook this up to my Series 80 at some point. And look it in there, yeah. Disconnected. There's nothing on that port. Yeah, that's HPIB. That's super weird. I don't know how it got disconnected from here. Um, probably, like I was saying, during the uh, conversion, and they just couldn't be bothered to plug it in. I don't know. Um, but getting really close now to ready to try and install the operating system. Let me get it all put back together enough to uh, fire up and see what happens. All right, this has a uh, power. I've got the new fans in. They're not obstructed. The compact flash cards in there. So uh, I've got the floppy disk in. Let's see what happens. Okay, the fans, one fan is spinning. Let me try the controller. Uh, let's see. All right. May need to do that. Hard disk test will fail if it's not formatted, I believe. So we got one fan spinning. I'll need to take a look at what's going on with the other. But man, that, that's going to be so much quieter. Ooh, that's, that's pulling. Well, it's got all this space, yeah. Uh, I wouldn't run it like this for long because the uh, top of the case is air management. The sides are vented, um, so it shouldn't uh, be too much of a problem to leave the sides off. But I just want to see what it does with the disc here first. Then I'll solve what's going on there. Wish I could get to the back of that more easily, but I really wanted to make sure and see what's going on here first. Let me put this on at least. It'll draw air where it needs to go. All right. All right, uh, hard disk power up, self-test failed, can't access hard disk, okay. Um, let's see, hard disk. Uh, let's see if we can format. Uh, execute, yeah, continue, yes. Formatting disk, no idea what was on that, probably DOS install or something. Doesn't matter, it's just kicking around. Um, well, okay, that's interesting. Uh, you know, I don't actually know how you install the system on here. <laughs> There's a FAQ on Keysight's website on how to do this. Let me look at that. Starting in the system configuration menu, copy each file from the flexible disk to the system directory of the hard disk. Uh, <laughs> so it's really copy all the files. Great. Well, while well, I've got it powered up, let me see if I can figure this out. So uh, the fan over here is controlled by this and it's working well. I can turn it down if I really want to um, or turn it back up, although it really doesn't seem to control it all that well. But fan one here isn't doing anything. So I'm going to unplug that header and move it down to like, I don't know, fan four. It's really hard to do this blind in there. Uh, there we go. I guess header one's just dead. All right. Now we're talking. And that cooler master is so much louder than the uh, Noctua. It's also moving a lot more air, though. All right. That's not bad at all right there. That is, that's hauling. And it's so much quieter. And I can reinstall the operating system. All right, I think that's it. So let's try rebooting and see what happens. Uh, hard disk passed. System file not found. 
really. All right. I wish there was a, a, a reboot option. Even if you have a keyboard connected, you can't just control alt delete or anything. Oh, well. All right. All right. I think I didn't like the compact flash card because upon a reboot, it says there is nothing on the hard drive and it has no bytes free. So, yeah. Yeah, I've read about weird incompatibilities like this. I'm going to have to go digging through my compact flash card stash to see which ones might be better suited to this. All right, so new plan. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just not use a compact flash card for now. Uh, I can't find any of my other ones, and I think that's just because I kind of just went man with them because all the ones I have left right now didn't work in XT IDE adapters. So I suspect they wouldn't work in this either. I've read that this thing is very finicky about which compact flash cards it'll work with. So for right now, I'm going to put the original hard drive back in. Um, it's still working and it's, I mean, it's pretty loud, but it's not too bad. So I'll just go with it. And if that fails, I can actually boot off of the uh, OS floppy disks. So there's no real problem with that. It's just slow. And then ultimately I can actually um, boot off of these, connect to this over network, put in a hard drive and then just copy the files onto the hard drive to install the operating system over the network. I've already kind of tried this with uh, this. I was trying to get it to work, but these load with full network support. So really it's exactly the same as booting the whole thing normally. I've already backed this drive up over the network. I have all of the whole contents of that drive. So if it fails, I'm not gonna lose anything. And I would honestly rather restore that one because this came with the symbol utility installed and these don't have that. Um, it's just a couple of dot opt files, I believe that are on the drive that have that. I've already backed all that up. Um, I'm sure that the symbol utilities are available out there. I'm pretty sure I found them somewhere. So if you need those, you can find them. They were a paid upgrade though, so I'm not going to distribute them. So uh, do keep that in mind. But uh, yeah, so no compact flash card. However, that doesn't mean I don't have a solid state solution. Um, I'm going to be getting some disk on module uh, adapter things. They're basically an SSD over IDE. Um, they just predate things like the King spec IDEs. So they're a little different. Um, and eventually I'll replace this with one of those and that will work. Um, so for now I'm going to go with, uh, this drive going back in there and that'll be it. So, yep. All right. And here's the final cable management. If you're curious, I have the fan cables coming from the fan controller coming through the side of the card cage. The fan power cables themselves are routed right behind the hard drive mount plate and they are managed going through here, wrapped through the actual cable management things and then go to their respective connectors and they're kind of pinched in and hidden in places that way they're not in the way. It's really no worse than whatever's going on back in here. It's just that I didn't zip tie everything together because I know I'm more likely to modify this when I swap this over to a DOM. So, uh, yeah, I'm very, very happy with that. Now let's throw it all back together and see how loud it is. I'm actually kind of curious to keep the hard drive in there and see how loud that is on its own. Yeah, the GPIB connector was definitely uh, removed because it interferes with these cards going in. So I've removed this fan and I'm just going to pull that tight and hold it down. And I'm pretty sure that is going to fix that problem. Yep. Now it's just getting these aligned and in over everything else. That's going to be fun. All right, it's all back together and it's got the new fans in it. It's got the old hard drive, but that should still make a significant improvement. So let's go ahead and fire this up and hear how it sounds. But first, here's what it sounded like before modifying it. And here's now. That is way, way quieter. The hard drive really isn't an issue at all either. So yeah, I'm fine leaving that in there for now. 
Alright, that wraps up the modifications to the HP 16500C. I'm going to split this video into two because I went on and did about 20 more minutes of demonstration on using it, and I think that would be better off in another video. So I hope this was useful to some people who may be considering getting one of these or have one and are looking to modify it. If you want to support the channel, I am on Patreon, but for now, that's it. Stay tuned for the next part, and I'll see you next time.